Hey everyone, Nimix Plays here. Today I make a video on what I think are the best decks for beginners currently in Legend of Terra. If you don't know me, I've hit rank 1 every season in Legend of Terra, and I thought it'd be nice uh, to make a video with what I think are the best decks for beginners. I mostly pick these decks because they're, they're budget friendly, they're uh, affordable, and they're pretty easy to acquire for uh, new players. There's been a huge influx of new players lately, and I'll make sure to also state um, if they're easy, medium, hard difficulty at the end of each deck. But yeah, I think I think these six decks, I kind of just handpicked them. These are all, you know, acquirable is the main thing I was looking for, like budget friendly. So yeah, here are our six decks that are budget friendly and I could all you should all be able to be taken to the master ladder or like be able to be taken to the highest level. So if you're just starting and let's say you start thinking iron, then these should be able to get you to master, which is the highest rank currently. So let's get into it. This first deck I'm really excited about. I think it's phenomenal. I use it uh, at top master level. This is actually like my deck of choice, or one of my current deck of choices at the highest level of competition. So uh, from iron to master, it's affordable. It's really good. So so I guess I'll go real quick. It's a fearsome deck. Basically, the point of the deck is you use this fearsome keyword. It can only be blocked by enemies with three or more power. It's basically an aggro deck that you swarm with these fearsome units, and they can only block some of them, and it puts on huge damage really fast. Uh, it gets huge momentum. So that's the general idea of the deck, but yeah. Three Mark of the Isles, this is used uh, to defeat like combat tricks. Like let's say um, they use a card that buffs their guys plus two plus two, you can use some response to trade. You can use this as a one mana uh, again to trade like a smaller to a bigger unit, say that you have a two mana Miss Wraith here and they put like a four mana card, you can use this, bump it up and trade with the four mana card and get really good field control. And then if they use Mystic Shot, which is a removal spell, then you can use this to make your unit live and then push for huge damage. So yeah. Beats removal spells, good combat trading. Sigil Onlooker, Nightfall, which means that this is the second card played this round. It gets plus two, plus two, and fierce in this round. So it's a one mana 4-1 four, four that can't be blocked by two or less uh, units with two or less power. So yeah, really good. Uh, three Rift and Horror, three two Fearsome. Three Elise. The reason I chose this as a budget deck is that you start with, I think, two Elise. This is the main reason I chose this as a budget deck. But yeah, this deck's amazing. You can, get, you can definitely get Master. I actually recommend this deck to people that have full collections. Um, to use the deck for Masters, yeah. Elise, 2 3 Fearsome Sons of Spider. I guess I'll briefly go the decks a bit quicker just because there's six of them. So, yeah. Mist Race, uh, Fearsome 2 2 that when summoned, all the Mist Race every grid plus 1 plus 0. Pale Cascade, give an ally plus 2 plus 1. If the second card played this turn, draw 1. Stalking Shadows is good to find more Fearsomes. Doom Beast, if the second card plays this turn, drain 2 in Nexus. That means that they lose 2 life and you gain 2 life. Really good off Stalking Shadows because you can heal 4 and then they lose 4. Frenzy Skitter. This makes so this buffs your spiders, but it makes all it has fearsome. Buffs your spiders and it makes all enemies lose minus one minus zero. That makes that all their three attack creatures can't block fearsomes anymore. Push for huge damage. Callista, so you have to craft this champion. You start with two Elise, I believe. And that means you only need four champions. So three Callista and one more Elise. Um, even without Callista, this deck's good. So you don't even need Callista. You can honestly just work two Elise, three Elise. Like you don't you don't even need it. as long as you have the core of this deck, you're fine. And nothing's too expensive. I think this is the only epic card. And, you know, you don't need the full... Again, for all these decks, you don't need the full deck. I mean, it's better to have the full deck. But it's supposed to be a budget deck for beginners. Fearsome, it makes your opponent's can't block. Callista, yeah, uh, easy level up. Just a 4-3 Fearsome. Um, Risen Mist, summon a Mist Wraith. So this card's Burst, so you can summon a Mist Wraith and then attack before your opponent gets to play a blocker. Because Burst means that it's still your action after you play it. So, Wraith Caller. This is, like, the best part of the deck. You want to keep this card. This You want to mulligan for this and two drop Fearsomes. Uh, but yeah, summon a Mistwraith. So it's a, it's a 4 3 body for 4 that summons a 2 2 Fearsome that makes all Mistwraith stronger. Monstrosity, kill an ally to deal damage equal to its power. To anything. This is the 40th card, just some reach. 3 Harrowings, card's amazing. Revive the 6 strongest allies that died this game and grant them Ephemeral. It means they die after the attack or when the round ends, but you basically just like put on huge pressure and they start killing your creatures. You just like reborn them all and make one massive swing. So that's the first deck. Second deck is Ash Sejuani. This deck is. Focus around frostbiting. Um, I guess we'll go over Ash. Um, attack, frostbite the strongest enemy. And you frostbite five plus enemies. When I level up, create a crystal air on top of your deck. That frostbite enemy and all other enemies have a three or less and then draw a card. Basically, it's like a free, it's like a freeze control deck. The reason I recommend this deck is that on the seventh day of login for Legend of Terror, when you first start playing, I'm pretty sure they gave you two ashes. So you already should have two ashes in your in your inventory. You can get a third. I recommend a third. Then the other champion is Sejuani. Um, I rec I'm talking about the champions because they're the most expensive cards, but you don't even actually need three Sejuani. A lot of people actually only play two Sejuani in stack. So to reiterate, you, you start with two. I think it's like the seventh day longest bonus you get, login bonus you get um, two Ash. 
You get two ash, you get one more, and then you only need two Sejuani's. Three if you want, but you only really need two. But let's go into it. Two Brittle Steel, Frostbite Enemy, three Earless Health. Three Omen Hawk, it's a one drop, but I'm summoning Grant, top two eyes, neck plus one plus one. Um, three Verse and Century, last breath, draw one. Just a two drop that can block and draw a card. This card's really good, Icefall Archer. Play Frostbite and Enemy. Um, you can use this defensively to stop their attack. It, it's pretty much good at all states of the game. Even they play a huge, you know, say they play like a huge bomb, like, uh, I don't know, just pick something random, like Captain Farron. 8-8 eight, eight with Overwhelm. You freeze that bad boy and it's just 0-8. And they kind of lose a lot of momentum. They played 8 men on a huge attacker and then gets frozen. So yeah, it can also be used um, offensively. Like you freeze their blockers and then you, if you have Ash, you can freeze multiple things to make a huge swing. But yeah. Oh, another good combo. So we'll go to the next card. Shafarian, Glory Seeker. 5-1 Challenger, which means um, you can choose which enemy blocks it. So you kind of like hook them and force them in the combat. It can't block itself, but you can like Icefall Archer to freeze their their one of their units and then hook it and kill it for free because their guys Frostbite makes a guy have zero attack. Um, three Troll Chant, give an ally plus zero plus two and give an enemy minus two minus zero this round. It's so efficient for two mana. This card just insanely well rounded, versatile, really good card overall. Three Rose and Trap. I think this card is insanely good. I think this card is actually like kind of like bonkers good. This card is amazing. Uh, when I'm summoned, shuffle and Rage Yeti top your cards of your deck. Puts a one mana five five really good three drop, um, three calling strike killing unit with three less power. You can freeze something like anything like even like uh, again like let's I'll use this example again. You freeze their eight eight and then you just kill it with calling strike. So now it's zero attack. It's frozen. Uh, three ash. Oh, and Ash's level up says uh, enemies with zero power can't block. So any frostbite can't block. Three hearth guard five five makes all your allies in deck plus one plus one. This card is insanely good. Trafarian assessor when I'm summoned draw one for each. Five plus power ally you have, that counts. Hearthguard, Ash, Glory Seeker. If it's buffed by um, the Hearthguard, it draws for itself. Okay, Frostbite two enemies. Harsh Wind's good defensively and offensively with Ash because you can make it so Ash levels up and then enemies with your pet can't block. Two Reckoning, if you have a five plus power ally, kill all units, kill all units with four less power so you can you know, kill decks that have a bunch of weenies and you can freeze things and kill them, but yeah. Just Sejuani, give an enemy Frostbite and Vulnerable this round. That means that anything can challenge it. So if you get an enemy Vulnerable, then any any of your cards can attack it that turn. But yeah, just freeze things. You really, you're rarely leveled up, but if you ever do, it's it's not like, it's usually used for this level 1 form, but if you do level it up, uh, each time you damage the enemy next for the first time, Frostbite on me, this, this will like rarely ever happen. Um, yeah. Just Frostbite and removal. Um, Captain Farron, as we're talking about. One, it's a 1 of, so it's an 8-8. Eight, eight. Overwhelm, which is a huge finisher, but also gives you three this card. Deal four the Nexus. Basically, if games drag on too long or against control, it's like a finisher. Yeah. Very good there. All right, third. Draven Jinx. I believe you start with the Jinx. I think you start with two Jinx. I don't know if you start with Draven, but that's why I picked this deck. This deck's extremely good. It's one of the best aggressive decks in the game, or aggro decks. Uh, so it's also extremely cheap. Like All decks I'm, I'm naming right now are like really good decks. Like. For the most part, as I said, every deck here can get you the highest rank. So these are all competitive. Um, but Epic, this is the second rarest after Champion in terms of like how expensive cards are to, to craft. Um, this is you only need two of this, so it's a really cheap deck. The whole deck's basically commons and rares. But two Poro Cannon to play discard one, create two daring Poros in hand. They're one more elusive. Basically, this activates your discard cards. What this deck does is it, it it's an aggro deck, but it has a bunch of cards that say when they're discarded they do things. This is when I'm discarded, someone a one one. Discarded summon zero two challenger. This one's crazy. When I'm discarded, grant all allies plus one plus zero. You pretty much make super wide boards, which means you put a bunch of units in the field and you buff them and just put on like huge pressure with discards. But yeah, you discard a card and then you get elusive poros, which means elusive means they can't be blocked if they're violent elusives. Um, three jury rigs, so discard, get a one one. Three sabotar, deal one to the enemy nexus when it attacks, two one. Three rummage, discard two, draw two. Urchin, one mana, two, one. Um, discard a card draw. So you just you just use these to discard the, the jury rigs and the, the visions and stuff. And I'll explain the other intricacies when we get to other cards. Three to Battlecaster, give other Battling allies plus one plus zero. So this is really good with the jury rig and the Flame Chompers to make your little like free cards you summoned off discards have attack. Three Flame Chompers, cards amazing. Hook away blockers, push for huge damage. House Spider, two to it summons a, a one, one. Makes you play two units for one card. Three Draven, this card's insane. I usually always keep this. Um, play or strike, means when you summon it, or you attack with it, create a spinning axe in hand. That is a 
discard one, give all allies plus one plus zero. But what you can do is this 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 first off you can use to discard your like your your flame chomper and your um, jury rig and stuff, your vision. But also you can use it as discard. So let's say you you summon an attack, right? That means you got two axes in your hand that turn, right? If you play the one mana rummage, discard two, draw two, you basically just replace these free axes for to draw two real cards, which is really powerful. Gig excited to play one to play discard one, deal three anything. This can be units or nexus or anything. Three vision. Three crowd favorite. When I'm summoned, grab me plus one, plus one for each other ally you have. So if you have a huge board, like four or five units, and you play this, it becomes um, a six five or a seven six. Really strong. And overwhelm is trample. So it, it, it means damage that he deals to the, the blocker. Like, okay, so if he has seven attack, right, and they have five health, he deals two. So it, it goes through. So let's say they have a two two blocking him, and he's a seven six from his effect. That means you do four damage. It basically takes the difference between the attack and the defense and does the damage. All right, Jinx, this card's insane. So she's quick attack, which means when she attacks that she she strikes first. So if, if you have a four attack and you attack with her and they have four defense, then it kills the blocker without them even, like, without her dying. And I see your hand is empty. Okay, that's how she levels up. Uh, round start, you draw a card. Each time you empty your hand, create a super mega death rocket. Super mega death rocket. Deal four to enemy nexus, which is you know, four to their life, and then one to all enemies. So basically, like... You discard your hand with all the discard stuff. You level her up. You're drawing extra cards, and every time you, you empty your hand, you get a four mana to the, the nexus and deal one all enemies. Basically, you draw two, and you can use the axes, the rummage, all the discard stuff to empty your hand, and you get four extra damage. Last card: two all experimenters. Discard your hand, draw three. Activates Jinx, refills your hand, activates all your discard cards. Helps you keep keep going if you're on a steam. So yeah, pretty good. Um, this deck is a custom deck. I actually made this deck a few formats ago. Uh, it actually was regarded as a high tier two or a tier one deck. I only picked this deck. It's 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 like okay. I mean it's fun. It's a different strategy. It's okay. I picked it because it only has one champion. You don't start with Fizz as a champion, but he's the only champion in the deck. So you only need three champions total to make this deck. So I chose it. The, the post about it. Basically, use elusives. This is an elusive deck. The elusive keyword says can only block by elusive units. So basically, most of these units can't be blocked, and you just like attack directly with huge units that can't be blocked. Um, okay. Uh, it's it's basically about Starlet Seer. You want to you want to mulligan for Starlet Seer when you cast a spell, grant the top ally in your deck plus one plus one. So you you play Starlet Seer, you start playing spells, and every time you draw an elusive that can't be blocked units, except by other elusives, they're all buffed by plus one plus one. So you're attacking with like really big unblockable units, and you win like that. Fizz says, when you cast a spell, stop all enemy skills and spells targeting me and give me elusive this round. Basically, he's an elusive that if they try to remove him with like a removal spell, he can stop that removal spell. Like if you use a spell, if they use a removal spell on him, you use a spell in response, he just like stop negates it. Like he stops it and he lives and he gets elusive. So basically you have this like, you want to get him buffed by like Star Wars Seer and other stuff. And you want to uh, just be attacking for huge elusive damage by a card that can't be uh, killed. It's really fun. So yeah, Star Wars Seer in, is the main point of the deck. So you just want Star Wars Seer. All right. Three Brittle Steel, Frostbite enemy, three Headless Health. Dogs of Iron, give an ally plus zero plus two this round. This protects your units. Three Fizz, we went over. Three Omen Hawk, when I'm summoned, grant top allies two, plus two plus one. Okay, this is a this is a two three that can be it can be hooked by enemies, but it's basically just a two mana two three elusive. It can be hooked by enemy units, but it's worth it because it's elusive damage and it gets buffed. Shared spoils, grant the top three units in your deck plus one plus one. Plunder, draw one of them. Plunder means if you attacked or did damage that turn already, you get this effect. So let's say you sum, summon elusive, you attack, and then you play this. Because then you get the plunder ability. So plunder is, I'll just read it. A card triggers plunder ability when you played, if you damage the enemy nexus this round. So your elusive units can easily do that. So it can warning shot, and this gives you a buff elusive. And if you have Star Seer, it's buffed twice. Laundry lizards, round start deal two to me. Three mana, three five elusive. Three fury of the north, give an ally plus three plus four this round. Three salvage gives you more steam. Toss to draw two. Toss means the mill. It means you just send the bottom two cards you deck to the graveyard. Uh, and then draw two. It just makes you draw more cards. Zap Spray Fin's really good. If I'm summoned, draw a spell that costs three less from your deck, and then when you summon, he refills your spell mana one. It's really good. Silver Wave Rider, very straightforward. 4-4 four, four elusive. Um, has a tune as well. When I'm summoned, refill your spell mana one. So that's good. Uh, just These get buffed, and they're like way stronger. Battle Fury is the final card. Grant ally plus eight plus four for eight mana. Uh, really strong on Fizz because he can negate things that remove him. So you just have this like giant Fizz attacking with like unblockable damage. So yeah, only three champions, just three Fizz. Next we have Poros. Poros are cute. They're fun. But they're actually pretty good right now. No joke. Like 
I'm not just saying this because it's like a beginner video. Like this, is, they're actually pretty decent. Um, all you need is Vi. Only a three champion deck. You can run Brahm if you want, but you don't need it. Um, all you need is three Vi. So I've chose this deck again because it's mostly cheap, but it's because it only needs three champions. Three Vi. So let's say you get a Vi um, out of like a, a pack or a capsule or whatever, and then you only need two more two more Vi's and you have a deck. So yeah. Uh, the way this deck works is you use, it's mostly based on Poro snacks. Grant Poro allies everywhere, plus one, plus one. It's in hand, deck, the ones that are even generated by cards, everything. So you start yeah, you start with one ones that are pretty weak, but when you start playing these Poro snacks, they all become like two twos and three threes, and you're just playing these one mana three threes, and your opponent can't keep up. And there's also other other ways to finish that we'll get into. Three Poro Cannon, discard one, create two daring Poros. These are buffed by you know, unblockable cards that are buffed by Poro snacks. Thermal Beam. To play, spend all your mana, deal not much damage to the unit. You basically line this up with how much mana you have, and you like kill their unit. So let's say you want to uh, kill a two health unit, you just play like a card, so you have two mana left, and you kill a two health unit. You can also kill big units, pretty versatile. Three dang Poro, three lonely Poros, card's really good, but I'm summoning create a random Poro in hand, a random one cost Poro in hand. So these are all like it's a Poro gives you another Poro basically. Uh, three Mystic Shot, deal to anything. Just go to Nexus to finish people off, or you can use it on any units as a removal spell. Three Patch Poro, but this card's pretty insane. Two mana, two, three. While in a hand, I have a random keyword that changes each round, but I'm summoning Grim and keyword. Basically, in hand, let's say it has elusive, uh, you don't play it, the next turn it changes. Let's say it has like lifesteal. Next turn it changes, you, you have tough. But whenever you summon it, it keeps that keyword forever. So you can, yeah, elusive is pretty good with it. There's a lot of good things. I, I like elusive, like Challenger, um, Fury's cool, Quick Attack. There's all kinds of cool stuff with it. But basically, every round in your hand, it, it gets a random new keyword. When you summon it, it sticks and keeps that keyword. That So if you have tough in your hand, Patch Poro off tough, and you summon it, it's permanently tough the rest of the game. Three Poro Hunter. Or when someone draw a Poro, if you have a Poro ally. If you have a Poro, you summon it, you get another Poro out of your hand. Three Mighty Poro, three through the Overwhelm, gets pretty big with the Poro Snacks. Again, it's the Trample that deals a chip damage, Nexus through the enemy's defense. Three Poro Snacks, the main card of the deck. Grant Poro allies everywhere, plus one, plus one. Three Vi. This card's kind of, I, I guess, complicated. I don't really know. Um, it's kind of just used as a generic removal, or just a generically good unit. And it's super easy to get it stronger because you're playing a bunch of like cheap cheap cards. So it gets to effect very fast. But while I'm player in hand, so let's say it's my hand to 2-4, grant me plus one plus zero when you play another card, Max. So let's say you open it, it's 2-4, right? If you play Lonely Poro, it becomes a 3-4. Every card you play gets plus one plus zero. So every time you play it, it gets another attack point. Then when you, you play it, it, it easily comes in with like five, six, seven, even like eight plus attack. Let's say you play like three Poros, that's just three procs for it. So it comes in as a 5-4 next time you play it. When you attack for 10 damage, so it's with a 10-4 and strikes, next it becomes a permanent 10-5. And when it strikes a unit while attacking, deal 5 damage Nexus. So it deals 5 damage Nexus when you attack with it when it's leveled up. Um, Challenger, so it can choose who blocks it. It like hooks them in, they battle. Tough, takes one less damage from all sources. Really good card, just generically wounded. Three Aurelia Porealis, six mana card. Create two random Poros and two Poro snacks in hand. Pretty crazy. This card I like a lot, Heart of the Fluff. When you play it, combine all of our Poros into a Fluff of the Poros. It gains their stats and keywords. So it gets, so let's say you have a Poro um, with, let's say Mighty Poro is Overwhelm, Daring Poro is Elusive, so Unblockable, so it's a chip damage. This is a random keyword, you got a random keyword Poro, which can, they can give you all kinds of stuff. Um, then, then when you play this, it gains all their stats. So if you have, let's say you, Let's say a hypothetical situation, you have uh, 3 3 Poro, the Mighty Poro. Let's say the, the Mighty Poro and like a Daring Poro and a Lonely Poro. You play Poro Snacks, you have a 2 2 Elusive, a 2 2 Other Poro, and a 4 4 Mighty Poro, right? Then you play this, and it counts itself. So then you get, you become a, I think it's 12, 12 12 with like Challenger, or a 12 12 with Overwhelm and Elusive, which is like a huge finisher. Then if it were to die, it, it summons it back. So it, it, it transforms into this. It comes out the keywords together. It's a finisher. If they do kill it, you still get the 4-4 four, four back. So yeah. I'm gonna give it all. Raise all allies' power and health to the highest power or health among allies. Grant all allies ally keywords. So basically, if you have an elusive unit, all your units become elusive. If you have an overwhelm unit, all your units become overwhelmed. Then it makes all your units attack, the highest attack, whatever unit has the highest attack on the field, that number and defense, the highest defense. So basically you play Vi, you easily get rid of 10 attack, then you play this and all your units, all your Poros become 10 attack, four health Poros with like Challenger and Tough. And they can, even if you have like, you know, the one one, they become elusive or 
mighty portal become overwhelmed. So you just have a field of like you play this, you have a field of a bunch of poros that are like ten four tough challenger elusive overwhelms and you win. Pretty crazy stuff. The last deck's an extremely powerful deck. I also use this at the top of the master ladder, which is the highest level, the highest rank in this game. Uh, these two decks particularly are ones that I enjoy a lot, both aggressive decks, and they're pretty fun, they're stylish, and they're very powerful. Let's get into this deck. This one utilizes this overwhelm keyword we've been talking about a lot. So it's, it's basically a straight-up aggro deck. This is like a... It's very unit-based. It's not like a, a burn deck in other games where you try to just like straight do damage to the Nexus. It's like you play a bunch of super beefy units that have the overwhelm keyword and, and push for huge damage, and in general, everything does some damage. It's a unit-based aggro deck. Um, three Legion Sabotar, attack, deal one to any Nexus. Uh, push pet, two one fearsome, one mana can't be blocked by enemies. So basically most one drops can't block this. You get a free two damage in when you play it. Three Slayer Soldier, this card's insane. If it's the first card played this round, it gets its effect. So you play it first. Give me plus one, plus one. It becomes a three, three, one drop and you just push for three damage. Three Kim's a Disciple, when I survive damage, deal one to any Nexus. It's good because it's a two, three. So it blocks a two, two, it deals one to any Nexus. Uh, three house spider, two two summons a one one, lets you uh, go wide and get a bunch of, bunch of uh, attackers in, so you have more attackers than blockers, you get chip damage in. Pure Demolitionist, this card's insane. Play, deal one to an ally, so you deal one to your own one of your own units, not itself. And then you deal two to my Nexus. So basically you deal one to one of your units, you deal two my do two burn damage to my Nexus. If you use it with Crimson Disciple, it's three damage because you do the one damage to this, and then does a two damage to my Nexus, and then this card's effect triggers since it's five damage, you deal one to my Nexus. Three Pale Cascade. This is just a, a buff spell, giving an ally plus two, plus one, but it also draws two cards. So it's a buff spell, it can push for damage or be used in, you know, to beat removal spells or certain combat tricks, combat situations, but it refuels you. It also draws two cards. Uh, three Transfusion. Deal one to an ally to give another ally plus two, plus two. Pretty versatile buff spell. If you use it on the Crimson Disciple, since it survives damage, deals one to the Nexus. And you can use it to push extra damage, you can use it to win combat trades, keep your guys alive. Very versatile card. Uh, three Draven. This card's insane. Cause it's because of the quick attack. When it attacks, then we can't. If then we blocks it, like it's a three attack, then we has three defense, then it it, it wins the trade. Because that means it doesn't get to strike it back because it attacks first. So yeah, this card's really strong. It pretty much is a guaranteed three damage. You play on three, they attack. They can't block it, but they lose field control. Or they, they lose a blocker. If they lose their blocker, they're behind in the field, and then you just like have so many units at that point. Next attack is huge. So they pretty much have to take three or lose a blocker. It's really good. Uh, three iron ballista. Just four three over one for three. Three iron basket. This has allegiance. It says when you summon this, you get allegiance bonus. The top card of your deck matches its region. So if it, you play this, the top card in your deck is a Noxus card, then it gets plus one plus one and overwhelm. Um, really strong. So usually it becomes uh, since I only have six cards that aren't Noxus, thirty four Noxus cards. It usually becomes a five four overwhelm on turn four. Really strong. Three crowd favorite. When I'm summoned, grant me plus one, plus one for each other ally you have. You basically go really wide with this deck. Then you play a crowd favorite. It can become a 6-5 with overwhelm or a 5-4 with overwhelm or 7-6 with overwhelm. Just big overwhelm damage for four. One decides maneuver. It's the final card in the deck. Um, I'll briefly explain this card because it is unique. You stun an enemy, which removes it from combat, and you give all allies plus two, plus two, this, or plus two, plus zero this round. So it buffs your entire field, right? You push it for huge damage. Your whole field is beefed up. Plus two, plus zero. But the big thing to note this this card is there's a special interaction in this deck. Basically, if you attack the overwhelm unit, so you attack with everything, they block, you play this, whatever is blocking the overwhelm unit, you stun. And it removes it from, from the combat, right? So you got that. You play you play this overwhelm unit, okay? Then and they block, you play this, and you remove the one that is blocking the overwhelm unit. Then, since there's no blocker, overwhelm says excess damage I deal to my blocker is dealt to the enemy nexus. There's no more blocker because you you stunned it. You remove it from combat. So then the nexus goes directly. The damage goes directly to the nexus. So if you if you use dice maneuver and you stun the enemy blocking the iron ballista, it'll get plus two plus zero, and it'll it'll go directly to the nexus because there's no more blocker and it goes it does the excess damage, which is nothing because there's no blocker. Does that make sense? So basically, it makes this damage do direct damage. The overwhelm anything you dice maneuver. If you stun the enemy blocking overwhelm, it becomes direct damage. Whatever the attack is. Final card, one of my favorite cards, if not my favorite champion in the whole game. I'm pretty sure it is my favorite champion in the whole game. Darius. Six mana, six five. What a beast. Overwhelm. When he sees that, I mean, next to 10 or less health, so, which is pretty common you're playing an, an aggro deck. You're going to really commonly have your opponent at low health. He becomes a 10 six with Overwhelm. This card pushes huge damage. You play it on six. Even if they block with like a four defense blocker, they still take six damage. And 
if you use the Scythe's Maneuver, he becomes a 12-6, and you remove his blocker, which is 12 direct damage to the Nexus. That's huge. So that's that's all the decks. I'm going to just say which ones I think are the easiest and the hardest real quick. Um, this one is fairly easy. You just play units that can be blocked and you attack. This one's a medium difficulty. It's well-rounded. The Frostbites can be tricky, and you get put in kind of weird hands sometimes. So I'd say this is, this is easy difficulty. This is medium difficulty because um, you, you put in all kinds of situations. It's kind of hard to tell when you want to Frostbite for combat or Frostbite. Uh, is it worth it? Because you, you have to well time your Frostbites, but it's really rewarding. It's super fun. Um, this, this deck's medium to hard. It's, most of it's pretty easy, actually. I guess I'll give it a medium. The, the, the core parts are easy, but the discarding and, and making sure you're discarding the right cards. and uh, You don't want to have a hand where you have too many discard cards or too many cards that discard cards, but no discard outlets. Like You want to have a, a good mixture. You kind of map out your turns and make sure, especially with Jinx, that you have a way to empty your hand. It's not as simple as just, just willy-nilly discarding your entire hand. You want to make sure you get the most out of your effects with the discards. And there's common times where if you, since you have it, like, you know, you don't have infinite mana, you need to make sure you line up your mana to empty your hands uh, perfectly. You can, if you mess up, you can be stuck with one card in hand and miss your drinks level up. So I'd say it's a medium difficulty. So easy, medium, hard. This deck's pretty easy. They can't block your stuff. I'd say it's easy. Maybe medium, because it's a, kind of a weird deck. It's unique. But I'd say it's pretty easy to medium. This deck is pretty, pretty easy to medium as well. This deck's pretty pretty easy. You just overwhelm units. So all these decks are pretty easy. I'd say that they're all they're all fairly easy. This could be medium. This could be medium. Yeah, but that's my that's my guide. Um, I stream on Twitch. If you want to follow me, Nick makes plays on Twitch. I stream every day at six thirty p.m. EST, and I play at the highest level of competition. Again, I've said I've hit rank one every season, and I commonly play these decks, most of these decks actually, at the highest level of play. So if you'd like to see me in action or have any questions, just Comment down below or feel free to subscribe, but I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this was useful for beginners. Let me know how it went. Uh, see you guys later.